Welcome back to the practical part of this tutorial. So in this video, we're gonna take a quick look at the plugin that we'll be using today. So the practical tutorial will be done with uh, QGIS and with a plugin called Trans.Earth. So you can see that I already uh, opened up uh, QGIS here. So if you have not done it before, uh, you will just click on uh, ext extensions and then basically search for the Trans.Earth, which I already did here. So you just basically um, type Trans.Earth and it will show up. So this plugin is actually quite a, a nice one in terms of support and in terms of um, uh, bug fixing. So you can see that uh, there's uh, in the change log, uh, there's currently something being done and something being fixed. So this is really nice. You can also see in forums uh, or look in forums if you have any question. So in general, this trends.earth uh, plugin is a land change monitoring tool and it's free and open source. So it does not come uh, at any charge and you can see the source code. Uh, so you can visit, visit GitHub uh, Conservation International uh, to uh, have a look at the code. What is nice about this plugin is that it uh, utilizes um, cloud processing. So it actually uses Google Earth Engine for its processing in the background. That means even if you are looking, for example, at very large countries, say like Russia or like Canada, uh, you can still process the data because it's all in the cloud. So you only have to give you a request and then uh, the plugin handles everything for you and uses Google Earth Engine to process your data. The only thing that is being done on the computer actually is the final indicator um, computation, but that usually is not too resource extensive and can be done on local computers. So what this tool will do for us in terms of land degradation monitoring is it uh, supports the quantification of the the three sub indicators that are important uh, to achieve uh, land degradation neutrality as mentioned in the theoretical presentation. So what we can derive here is the changes in land cover, the changes in productivity, and the changes in soil organic carbon. What makes this tool very important for developing countries, for countries that are part of RED, for example, is the ability to use it for reporting. So for example, if you have uh, reporting commitments to uh, UNCCD, you can use this plugin and actually get quantifications that can be that can be directly be used to be put into the reports. The tool was created in a, in a partnership between Lund University, between NASA, and the Global Environment Facility (GEF). So it's a, it's a partnership, really. The plugin uses a, a wide variety of datasets. So it, for example, uses NVI data derived from AVHR and MODIS. It uses soil moisture information, precipitation, evapotranspiration, land cover and soil organic carbon data, which are globally available, and also administrative boundaries that uh, allow you to just look up your country or your state and then do all the anal analysis based on that boundary. Okay, now we're gonna have a look at uh, how we can actually uh, use the plugin and uh, install it. Uh, so I just showed you how to how to find it. Uh, once you have installed it, uh, you can just click on this button here. That is the settings button. And then if you're a new user, you can just register here using your name, your institution and your email address. And then you can uh, just log in. So I will just log in for now. And what is also nice here is that you can have your email put into the plugin. And then if you have a, a task running on Google Earth Engine, you will just get a notification once everything is done. So in this video, you learned how to download uh, trends.earth, uh, what it can do, and you already logged in. So in the next video, we're gonna move on and actually process data.